Welcome to Table Knocks. Hey. My name is Max. I'm Doolin. I'm Jash. I'm Kenny. And today we are talking about Fractured Sky, the next game from Ivy Studios, which is on Kickstarter right this very moment. Woo! Woo. So the aim of the video... <laughs> So today we're going to tell you our favorite things about Fractured Sky and why you should buy it, our least favorite things and why you shouldn't buy it, and then just some final thoughts and hopefully at the end of this video you come out knowing whether or not this game is for you. So, for starters, what is Fractured Sky? Doolin, do you want to take this one away from me? Sure. So, uh, it's an area control bluffing game mm -hmm. uh, where each person is going to be controlling these airships uh, along with uh, just basic resources, right? And you're choosing on your turn to spend those resources or simply play one of three airships on your uh, that round. Uh, once you've used up all of those, you take one of the spots for the player order on the next turn and then after that, we're gonna check all of the places that are gonna get revealed because there is hidden information mm -hmm. uh, of where uh, you can score points. Think Mario Party, maybe, where like all <laughs> these locations are going to uh, score you these star pieces, and whoever has the most star pieces at the end of the game is gonna win. And so the thing on your turn is you had to decide, okay. Am I going to go for resources, or am I going to bolster this area where I know that I already have a couple of things that will give me extra things? Or am I gonna spend some money to reveal to me some of the hidden information, because everything that scores is hidden except for one every single round, which yeah. is not that helpful as the game goes on. No. Uh, but the start of the game, yeah. it's one of three possible star yeah. falls in the first round. By the end of the game, it's one of seven possible star yeah. falls at the last round, yeah. so it becomes increasingly more beneficial to look at all the information at play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you nailed it. It's uh, for one to five players, we have no experience or even the rules for the solo mode. Mm -hmm. um, and to clarify, we have only played this at the four player count. Now, why should people get Fractured Sky? Kitty. I think kind of like other Ivy games, it's a game that is like very sound on its own, right? But then that adds an extra layer of like, playing people at the table, which makes it a lot more interesting. There's a dynamic of the bluffing that just really amps up the entire mm. game, I would say. It just makes it, you have to think like five levels deep to really, yeah. <laughs> to really get ahead, but. Yeah, if you're someone who enjoys poker or you enjoy other games where you're dealt a hand and it's up to you to figure out how to play not only the cards, but also the people around you to try and read their bluffs like, Oh, he went all in, but do I actually think that he has something good or is he trying to bluff us? Mm -hmm. One of the wrinkles in this game is that you have, I believe it's what, 12 chips? And the vast majority of those chips are gray on the underside. Basically, when it's a gray chip, you know it's either a zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, yeah. But then the one and the 10 are white on the bottom. So if someone plays a one or a 10 chip, that is that is concrete information. We know it's one of the two. Mm -hmm. The problem is, which of the two did they play? So a lot of the game is about trying to read other people. If they've placed a white down, you're like, okay, but is that your one? <laughs> which one is it? Or is that your 10? I do think, and especially our more recent play highlighted that for me, the use of the towers and markets and things like that really aid in the deduction element. Yeah, for sure. Um, for if, sure. if I've seen Jash put down two gray tokens that are both touching towers, lending it additional power, and then one white token elsewhere, in my mind, that white token is his 10, probably, and he's just mm. aiming for resources with those two grays. I could be totally wrong, but I really, really love that element. I definitely think that this is a game for those that enjoy that. So one of the things I liked about it was that you could go for, um, I guess, asymmetric strategies, because mm -hmm. you can go for spending your resources to look at the objectives of where to place things or the objectives of what like condition you need to meet on mm -hmm. the board. But also, every turn, player order is decided as the you lay down your last chip, mm -hmm. and the person and who's player in first, order is. Crucial. Yes, it's Crucial. gonna change every turn. Huge. And Talk to it, the person who's lost on tiebreak twice. Yes, yeah. <laughs> because player twice. order decides the tiebreaker. Right. So there's a strategy of going last, so you 
get more information on the board and you can place your chips after everyone else. But then there's also an advantage to just getting your chips down as quick as you can and making sure that you win every tiebreaker. Mm -hmm. I think if you like a game that like ramps up too. Dang it, Max, I haven't gone. No, please speak to it. Please speak to it. <laughs> One of the biggest uh, times I've ever agreed with like a uh, another creator was very early on in watching videos and it was Alex from Board Game Co. Mm -hmm. Talked about how he doesn't like when games take away things as game goes on, but instead ramps up, gives you more things to do, gives you more like abilities and like it just creates this like first turn pretty simple last turn incredibly fun incredibly big and this game is it takes that to a whole nother level because by by round one we, we already established there's like three possible victory points that can be scored but last round there are I seven mean, seven at eight? least seven or eight right yeah how's there eight just seven there's six rounds right or is it no nope, five rounds oh well <laughs> <I'm dead. laughs> The, the ramping up is easily my favorite part of this, is that by the end of the game, it's just so exciting. And round five is mm -hmm. just like, we're flipping over a million things and tons of people are scoring points and yeah, it's great. Now, for those who are on the fence and we've been talking about what we like about the game, there are obviously imperfections. This is not a perfect game. And for those that are wanting reasons <laughs> to not get it, let us try and push you <laughs> over the ledge. Can you, can you, can you talk to that at all? Um, so I did not do very well these last two games. Uh, I think I came last both times. I think... Oof. Yeah, oof. <laughs> so I think uh, this is the kind of game, like, is... I found it really hard to kind of grok the strategy of, like, how to do well. I think I, w I tried to go for over-information, because, I mean, don't you want that data to go by to make informed decisions? But I think I leaned too hard into it. Um, so there's, like, a, a learning curve to it that I think you kind of have to figure out. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you that there's a balance to be had. Yeah. Um, and Josh, you probably don't feel that way after this play that you just won <laughs> by speeding through. But uh, I went for heavy information this game too, and it worked to a point. Yeah. And then I had seen like, I, I saw like everything in round four, which was great. But I mentioned earlier, you're not able to get it all. So I saw everything. I still only secured like two star fall in round four, which is that's good. Yeah. But then round five comes around and I have no resources. Yeah. And I, I was I, like, dang it! Why <laughs> did I just do that? I did the same thing. Like I, I like I knew everything in round four, but yeah. I got one star just because by the time like I could actually put out stars, like it was just too late. So. Yeah. Yeah. It, there's a balance to be had, and it's one that I don't think any of us have fully latched onto, but I mean, that's good. We've only had a few plays this game. I think there's still more room to grow, strategy to figure out, the skimmers we've talked about. Yeah. We, we've barely used. utilized them. You used it and One secured yeah. two. two star fall in round five with a skimmer. So there's, there's a lot here that on the surface, it's quite a simple game, but in learning how to navigate that ramp ebb and flow, it, yeah. there is a lot to try and figure out. Yeah. As a person who loves hidden information games, I know that that's also not for everyone, right? Like uh, if you're if you're the type of person who likes to look at a board and know everything that yeah. everybody is doing, this is definitely not the game for you. Yeah. Um, and it, it, I know that there are plenty of players that also hate luck, like. And there is a little bit of that in play oh, too. For sure. Uh, and so like if you, I, I feel like table knots, we've, we've established that we are fans of, of both, but we definitely don't mind luck being in games. Mm -hmm. But if you are that way, like I, I don't think that you check should touch now. this necessarily. Yeah, yeah, check out now. <laughs> yeah. Even but, though we all seem to like it, that's a, that's a, if that's a breaking point for you, get out of here. But yeah. if luck and hidden information is your <laughs> thing, Absolutely go for this game, it's great. Yeah, absolutely. I do wanna say that I feel like it's a game where um, if you don't play well the first like couple of rounds, you're just out. Because even really? if- Really? Because yeah. Doolin and I don't have any experience with that. <laughs> we played great the first two rounds. We played, I, we played great both games. I, I don't know, like, you, okay, so this is a, a point that these two had and I disagree. But and let's, I also let's, disagree, let's talk yeah. through it. Uh, like, explain your thought processes there. So, I, I, earlier you said, um, like, the counter to that was you were in last at the end of round two. But just because you're in last doesn't mean you're necessarily playing bad. Because you could have 
you could be in last for star falls but have a good amount of resources to use later that's true but if you just make really poor decisions the first two rounds or end up the same place as other people so you don't get the star falls or resources then it's hard to catch up on the further rounds so if you do everything wrong which is what i did the first time we played <laughs> I, I mean that it could also happen in Catan. i mm -hmm. mean <laughs> I, I, you make initial placements in Catan. Like, i'm not winning this game yeah <laughs> i think that um this can also just be an issue with area control in general is that like yeah. if you if you are not careful early that you can you can hurt yourself yeah. i do think though with the ramping up like i knew after the first two rounds okay i lost out on seven I have only have one. There was only seven in the first two rounds, but there's seven total in the last round. Right. So like the first two rounds only give you enough victory points that the last round also gives. So right. like I don't know. There was a hope, I, I guess, uh, to to be had as well. Now, final thoughts. We've given you some loves, some dislikes, and anywhere in between. Final thoughts on Fractured Sky. I don't want to make this a yes, you should back this. No, you shouldn't back this. But just try and give you as much insight as we possibly can. Doolin, lead us off. You should back this. <laughs> we don't want to tell you you should back I'm this. Kidding. But Doolin uh, does want to tell you you yeah, should I, back this. I had. I feel like I've established this already. I love Ivy Studios, uh, and, and I know that a lot of their games are either really big hits for people or really uh, like big misses. Huge misses, yeah. Um, but this is just—it's right up there with Veiled Fate. It, 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 I would put Veiled Fate one, Fractured Guide two. Um, and the only real like difference there, because I, I do think that they're kind of similar. Like they if are. you're if you're a fan of one, you're probably gonna be a fan of the other. But I do want to mention that if you don't like Veiled Fate, I don't think this should immediately exclude That's you true. from liking yeah. Fractured That's Sky. True. There's way more information to be had here, mm -hmm. and I don't mean to to take over your statement, no, but no. I think it's important to mention that as someone who likes Veiled Fate, I actually like Fractured Sky more just because the additional information, though limited, mm. is it adds to the strategy to me. When I play Veil Fate, I have a fun time, but there are plenty of instances where I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm just doing this to do it. Mm -hmm. The game ends up being a blast, but I don't really know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Whereas when I'm playing Fractured Sky, I feel like there's enough information that I can parse to at least have a good idea of why I'm doing what I'm doing. So yeah. if you like Veil Fate, I think you'll like this. If you don't like Veil Fate, I Maybe do still this. think there's yeah. a chance that you enjoy this game. I don't want you to hear that and immediately tune out. I really, really enjoy it. I mean, Cult of the New, I understand that. I think this might be my favorite I Ivy Studios it. game. I, love it. I don't want to like stamp that. I don't wanna I don't wanna say that for a fact. I was really high on Mythic Mischief and then it kind of fell, though I do still think it's my favorite Ivy Studios game until this. But it's really good, and at least playing with us, I have a blast trying to read what you all are doing, trying to understand the board state and get all the information I can. I just find it a very compelling push and pull of resource and information and going for the initiative. And it's one of those that I never know what I should do, but it's always fun to just take a chance and do something. Mm. So hopefully we were able to provide you with a little bit of insight, and hopefully you're able to make your decision a bit easier on you as to whether you should or shouldn't get Fractured Sky. From here, as a Table Knots crew, I think it gets a thumbs up from all of us. Absolutely. In varying degrees. Up. But, Kenny, you didn't get a thumbs he gets up. Like, he gets like, it's a diagonal <laughs> thumbs up. Do we want to do, do a rating real quick? What I do mean, you think? sure, what do you think? sure. What do you think? Yeah, you I seem like it, you want to. I, I would give this, <laughs> I would give this, I'm so stingy with the scores. He's like, should I, we rate it? I don't know what to rate I, it. <laughs> I would give it, uh, oh man, this is big for me. Just know that, 9.3. Slap it on the screen. Boom, 9.3. 9.3. Right now, right now, yeah. Woo, kitty. Um, I'll give it a gold star. <laughs> That's not a rating. <laughs> it didn't get silver or bronze. Are you gonna give it two thumbs up? It's good. Oh my God. <laughs> I I will give it a 8.69 for no reason. <laughs> Just that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's the video. <laughs> oh that really you're gonna put it there?